Hello and welcome to Operation 8-Bit. I'm your host, Tony Landy, and today behind the camera, we have Bobby and Sparky. It's been over a year since we came up with the idea of Operation 8-Bit, and there have been a lot of things going on behind the scenes to get the organization off the ground. A big part of that has been reaching out to spread the word, and of course, trying to get donations that we can use to raise funds in support of our charities. In today's video, we're going to take a look at all of the great items that we've received so far and talk a little bit about each and every one of them. But before we start looking at the donations we've received, I want to begin by saying that this video is way overdue and also to offer my apologies to our supporters for us being a bit behind schedule. So with that out of the way, let's jump in. Our very first donations came from Jim and Betty Crowley of Valley Cottage, New York. They donated three items in all, and the first on the list is this circa 2005 HP Pavilion DV-1000 notebook computer. When it came out, the DV-1000 was considered an entertainment machine and came with extra features like this little remote control for playing DVDs. For the time, this thing was actually considered a lightweight notebook computer coming in at about six pounds. As a comparison, my HP Elite book that I got back in 2017 is specced out at 4.4 pounds, which is about 27% lighter. All in all, the unit is in pretty good shape cosmetically, but when we go to test it, we're getting a no boot disk error message. So more than likely the hard drive has gone bad. We're going to need to get that fixed, and we've actually got an interesting idea on how we're going to do that. So you'll definitely be seeing this machine again in an upcoming video. Next up from Jim and Betty, we have this Super Nintendo complete with over 30 games. When we first got the console, it needed a good cleaning. It was a bit grimy, and it looked like someone may have spilled some soda on it. At least I hoped that's what this sticky brown stuff is. Ugh. We wiped it down with some glass cleaner and a little rubbing alcohol, which did a good job of taking off most of the surface dirt and whatever that sticky stuff was. There were some harder to reach areas like the recessed logo that required a little extra scrubbing, so I took an old toothbrush to those areas. As we all know, it's not uncommon for plastics on these older machines to discolor over time. However, as you can see here, the top and the bottom halves of this case didn't discolor uniformly. The top looks just fine, but the bottom part is really yellowed. I've seen a few SNESs that have this kind of uneven discoloration, so apparently it's pretty common. It would be kind of cool if this was done intentionally as some kind of homage to the classic two-tone paint schemes that cars had back in the 80s, but that's obviously not the reason it looks like this. What's more likely is that at some point in the case manufacturing process, Nintendo must have had different additives in the batches of plastics that they used for each of the production runs. So, for example, let's say that in an earlier run, they didn't get the catalyst or the flame retardant mixture quite right, and more residues were left over in the batch that the bottom half came from. This ultimately resulted in it degrading and discoloring faster. Benji Edwards over at Vintage Computing and Gaming did a really in-depth article on this, and I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. Anyway, in addition to the general cleaning, we wanted to see if we could do anything about the discolored bottom half of the case, so we decided to retrobite that bit. To be honest, this was my first attempt to retrobite anything, and I am still getting my technique down. Looking at the before and after pictures, you can see that there is an improvement, but I probably could have left it in the solution for a little bit longer. But regardless, it is better. Anyway, while I had the unit apart, I also took the time to blow the dust off the board and to make sure all the components were in good shape. For the sake of time, I've sped up these clips of me putting everything back together. With the console reassembled, it was time to test it out to make sure I didn't accidentally break anything. 
And of course, the best way I know how to do that is start playing some of the games. We did check each one of the games, but showing that would take way too long and would be really, really boring. So here's just a few clips of some of my favorites. Our third and final donation it, from Jim and Betty is this PlayStation with 12 games and a few extra memory cartridges. As an extra bonus, we even got this game playbook for Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Looking at these titles, it's obviously somebody in the Crowley household really liked the Crash Bandicoot series. Anyway, like the Super Nintendo, this console was in really good condition and just needed some minor cleaning to get it ready to sell. Jim, Betty, thank you very much for all of this equipment and all of the other things that you've been doing for us behind the scenes. You guys have the distinct honor of being the very first people to jump in and support Operation 8-Bit, and that means a lot more to us than you can imagine. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon. Our next donation is this PlayStation 3 with a bunch of games from our longtime family friends, the Brown Brothers, Chris, Parker, and Hunter of Frisco, Texas. When we first announced that we were starting up Operation 8-Bit, the guys reached out to us right away to let us know they had some equipment that they would be happy to donate. From what they told us, the console was sitting in the bottom of a closet for a few years and they hadn't used it in a long time. But honestly, you could never tell, because look at it. As you can see, it's in fantastic shape, the games are complete in box, and everything works as advertised. Give me some cover! Guys, thank you very much for such a great donation. We really appreciate your kindness and generosity, and this is going to go to a great cause. Here's an interesting item that came to us last summer from Brandon Elliott of Katy, Texas. An empty case for a 1986 Mac 512K. Brandon told me that the computer had died years ago, but he held on to the case because he always had the idea of turning it into a fish tank. Yes, this is really a thing people do. They call it a mac aquarium. Anyway, he could never get past the idea that he would probably have to cut a hole in the top of the case, so it just sat on a shelf in his closet until he found about us and donated it. As you can see in this picture where I have the case next to my Mac SE, it was a bit yellowed with age when we first got it, so it was off to the RetroBright tub. In the end, I think it came out pretty well for a first pass. It's not perfect, but you can see that there's a definite improvement. We have a very specific idea in mind for this case that doesn't involve fish and it doesn't involve cutting holes in it. So if you're interested in seeing that, you may want to subscribe and click the bell icon below so you can be notified of that upcoming video and others that I've been hinting about when they are released. Thanks again, Brandon. I know you had this case in your family for a really long time and it was really hard to part with it. Keep watching, and I think you'll like what we have in store for her. Up next is this beast, a TV VHS combo that was manufactured in 1996 that we received as a donation a few months ago from a very nice couple that was having a garage sale in Plano, Texas. 
Unfortunately, we never got their names, but I do remember the husband was a veteran who served in both the Army as well as the Air Force. They had this thing priced for 10 bucks, and they were pretty motivated about getting rid of it. I was willing to pay the money, but as we were talking to them about Operation 8-Bit, they insisted we just take it free of charge. Honestly, I think they would have given it to anybody who had the slightest interest in the thing. Either that or it was going to wind up as a, you know, take it free from the curb. Anyway, although there really isn't a big market from this type of equipment, we accepted this one because it is in good shape and it will come in useful for testing older computer game systems. Plus, there's the real satisfaction of being able to play some of these older games on a real CRT. There's no comparison to a modern monitor when it comes to that. You'll be seeing more of this monster in our upcoming videos. These games came to us from Joey Benedito of New City, New York, and it's a pretty nice selection of titles. We've got Metroid Pinball for the Nintendo DS, Mount Motorstorm for the PS3, Battlefield 1942 for the PC, and this collection of sports titles for the Xbox 360. All of these games are complete in box and have the instruction manuals. I'm going to play a little bit of uh, Madden 08. I got my Trent Dream jersey on. I'm going to see how I can do. See if I do better than him. Thank you, Joey. Your jokes are just as bad as Sparky's comments, but this was a great donation and we really appreciate it. And boy, did I get my ass beat in that game. Just like the Dolphins. <laughs> the last donation we're going to cover today is from John Solar of Pearl River, New York. It's a complete Xbox 360 with a Kinect and games. We've been really close friends with John and his family for over 15 years, and he's like a little brother to me. On my last trip up to New York, we were hanging out, and he told me that he had an Xbox that he wasn't using anymore, that he wanted to donate it to the cause. He said it was in good condition, but I gotta tell you how surprised I was when I saw it in the box and complete when I went to pick it up at his house. Even being in as good a shape as it is, we made sure to test it. Okay, let's be honest. Testing the systems is really just an excuse for us to play some video games. John. Thanks again, buddy. This is a really generous donation, and you giving it up to help support us means a lot. Love you, brother. <laughs> so that wraps it up for our first donation video, and we want to thank all of our supporters one more time for their contributions. Hopefully we'll continue to get more items in, so we'll be able to make more videos just like this. If we don't, this is going to be a really short-lived endeavor, Sparky. As a reminder, unless otherwise stated, we do resell all of the equipment that is donated to us. The proceeds of those sales, along with the ad revenue that we make from this YouTube channel, go to support charitable organizations like the Tour de Force 9-11 Memorial Bike Ride and the Armed Services YMCA. These organizations in turn use those funds to support the families of law enforcement officers that lose their lives in the line of duty and the families of junior enlisted military service members, respectively. Your donations can make an amazing difference in helping the organizations and families that we support. So if you have an old Xbox, PlayStation, maybe an old Nintendo that you and your kids are, aren't gonna use anymore, or if there's just an old computer gathering dust in your attic or in the back of your closet, and if you'd like to donate it, please let us know by visiting our website. If you don't have any gear, but you still want to help out, you can consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll leave the links for both of these in the description below. 
Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, as this will help us a lot with our YouTube ratings. The more ratings we get and the more we spread the word, the more people we can help. So listen, we hope you enjoyed this video and we're going to see you next time on Operation 8-Bit. Hello and welcome to Operation 8-Bit. I'm your host, Tony Landy, and today behind the camera, blah, 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 start off bad. I have an idea for this thing. Mm. I'm not even going to tease, I'm not even going to tease about it in an outtake video. What are you doing now? I can't even see a count in. Right now, Sparky, as I'm behind this thing, Sparky's playing Pitfall. The setups on some of these were kind of a pain in the ass. I need a bigger, I think I need a bigger table. There was so much shit at one point I couldn't see. <laughs>